Happy Tuesday, 10 at 10. I am your uh, host, Richard Charpentier, and we're here to answer uh, questions that we received through Bakerpedia from bakers, answered by Baker. I am a, a certified master baker and a bakery scientist, and let's get started. So first question, how to improve a yellow to white crumb collar of a egg base sponge cake. Again, on when we're talking about sponge cake, we have clear definition. We have a white cake or yellow cake. And usually the color of the crumb of the cake is determined by the ingredients. So in the case of your questions, how to make it wider from being yellow, what contributes to the yellowness? So one in commercial formulation, the egg yolk, will contribute to color, whether liquid or powdered or soy flour as well, add some yellowish to your crumb color as well as lecithin. And any ingredients I've seen people also using some uh, uh, vegetable colors such as turmeric to create some color that will do that. Technically a white type of sponge cake contains more egg white. So change your ratio of egg white, uh, of egg uh, yolk to white eggs uh, uh, and you'll get more of a white crumb. But remember, as you're playing and changing your overall formulation, you will change the overall texture and you will also change the shelf life because of the fact they're different ingredients. So, but that's a good question. So moving on to the next question, uh, somebody is trying to understand the amount of citric acid needed to make cupcakes to extend the shelf life. Well, first of all, you know, that's a good thought, but you're, you're going with a very strong acid, citric acid. One, it will impact colors. And, and two, it will also mess up with your leavening system because it's gonna go right away and react with your sodium bicarbonate or your baking soda within your uh, cupcakes. So in order to extend the shelf life, there are several rules that needs to be understood. You know, adding an acid is great because you're lowering the overall pH, but then what do you have as a preservation system? Are you putting potassium sorbate, sorbic acid, sodium propionate? What are you doing as a propionic acid? Citric acid alone might not work. So you would need to understand your overall pH before you start doing that. And as you're playing with citric acid, it will impact one, the flavor I mentioned, and it will mess up with your overall uh, leavening system. So it's gonna react way too early. It's like, it's like almost putting citric acid is basically uh, sort of the base acid. It's around three and you have to understand the neutralizing value of citric acid before playing with citric acid because it will change it. But that's a, for a different question. But I cannot recommend any amounts due to the fact that I do not understand your formulation and giving you an amount might not work. This is something that's why product development is all about discussion and understanding what's your formula, what's in there, and what's your process, what's your throughput, what's your shelf life. And then we make a recommendation versus just giving you an amount. But for you in this case, think more potassium sorbate for now. That might be a little easier because it takes time to dissociate, but good question. Thank you. Uh, next question. We have a, again on the uh, uh, preservation system, how to use potassium sorbate in cake batter and is it best to be used as a powder or dissolved in water first? Well, just like the question earlier with the citric acid, you know, what I recommend is you go and see the, on the Bakerpedia uh, website and you go through the Ask Dr. Lin episodes. And I think it's episode three or episode 35, I think both of them, where she covers 
uh, preservation systems and how they work and what they mean. And if you go through the Bakerpedia uh, webpage, you'll find plenty of good information in terms of recommended usage rates, how they work and what to do. Just here to give you a, a, a quick indication. Putting it in water, because the solubility of potassium sorbate is highly soluble, it might be better because it will become, your batter will be more homogeneous. But the reason what potassium sorbate will convert into sorbic, but it's only dependent uh, on the overall pH of your finished batter. So for example, a 3.5 pH, which is very acidic, it's on lower scale of the acidity, you know, uh, it's almost like lemon juice, where at that pH level, your potassium sorbet will dissociate at about 90%. Basically, the potassium sorbate will convert into sorbic acid, creating a good system to prevent mold. But no cakes will be at 3.5. It's impossible. Most cakes, basically, due to the fact we're using baking powder, have a buffering uh, uh, system that creates your pH to be right around 7%. And at seven, potassium sorbate is not very effective. So it's good to get into around six, five, six, 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 seven. If you could in your cupcakes in order to get the preservation to work, or sometimes use a combination of potassium sorbate and sorbic acid together to have a broader coverage for your shelf life extension. But in terms of your question, I think either works, whether or not you solubilize you know, put in water first or put it straight in. I've done both in my career. So, and they were both efficient. What's most important is how much and where the pH of your cake batter is. But very good question. And please refer to Ask Dr. Lin. Uh, lots of great information right there. Uh, next question. Uh, uh, what, it's regarding flour. And the question uh, is asking, Water absorption, is water absorption related to the moisture of flour? Say flour A, the sample A, takes a maximum of 70% of hydration and flour B, 80% absorption. Is this related to the fact that sample A has less uh, uh, moisture or has more moisture? So to answer your question, uh, flour moisture varies as it comes from the mill due to the weather and, and, and the environment, the condition of the environment, that plays a big factor. But today, most millers basically will try to target a moisture content for the grains before milling at 14%. And they basically temper the grains in order to, to make it 14% as close as they can. There is a plus or minus. It's not precise. Uh, but the, to answer your question, your dough absorption is related to the moisture of the grain. Yes, it is. But if your miller is doing, is doing a great job at maintaining the 4% as is moisture, you should remain consistent within your product. What also affects your flour moisture the final, uh, final moisture of your baked product depends on your formulation that you're using and also your mixing. You know, the type of mixer would also impact how much moisture, but if you're comparing one side by side, yes, the flour will, will affect the overall absorption for your breads. Uh, very excellent question. Uh, next question. How do I get an open grain, open crumb in baguettes? Well, it's a good question being, being French and it should be easy enough to, to answer. See, baguettes, and, and I know the, the very, uh, refer to the alveolage, it's a French word, uh, or the how open, you know, you're trying to like the big open air cell when you cut the baguette and you'll see a lot of people doing that. It has several factors. Why? One, you have to find the right baguette flour. Most people uh, uh, go with a, T, a T65, which calls type 65, which is a certain level of ash. It's a way of basically label 
and, and I would a denomination for you, the type of flour you're using. Uh, typically, the protein content of French flour will run between 9 to 11. And we're talking more protein quality versus protein quantity. And the right absorption usually run between 70 to 75. I've seen higher. And the proper fermentation and the proper, proper technique of folding and punching and folding and shaping and proofing will give you the, in the right oven, of course. You know, you have to have a really hot, hot deck oven where you're putting your baguettes right on the stone with the right steam. So you would create a nice, nice expansion and then you will get that really nice open crumb structure, you know, very open air cell structure for your baguettes. And, uh, and if you have more questions, you can find me on Bakerpedia with the bakery resources as a consultant. Be happy to help you with your baguettes, but there's a lot of great information you can find online about how to make the best baguette. And last questions. Last question we have is mooncake filling. Can I use 0.1% of sorbate in mooncake filling for shelf life? And the answer is yes, yes. And going back to the question of ask Dr. Lin, well, you know, make sure your pH is right where you get the efficacy of the potassium sorbate you're putting in. But anything, you, you know, as you're extending your shelf life, it's important to know your water activity, your pH, what kind of preservation system you're putting in. And it's, it's, science you know it's engineered to make sure that everything works together along with your packaging along with a clean plant along with you know good sanitation program uh, uh, everything comes into place but yes put some 0.1 percent it's a good amount it's one gram for every thousand gram of filling and it's a 0.1 gram percent right, again thank you very much for another great tuesday 10 at 10 i'm your host Richard Charpentier, and you have a great rest of your week and happy baking, my friends.